just in terms of the commodity spectrum, let's close out on that discussion and where you think industrial demand for, for metals is going, copper being the exception with the supply side constraints, as Andrew has just pointed out. But would you be cautious on those metals that are driven or fueled by industrial demand? Uh, I, th I think, you know, at all times one needs to be cautious, but uh, looking at the supply uh, demand dynamics at the moment, um, it appears from the supply side that increasingly uh, capital projects that have been announced have either been delayed due to regulatory issues, financial issues. So uh, across the commodity spectrum, there seems to be some sort of delay in a lot of production uh, coming to the market. If one looks at iron ore, uh, two, probably about two years ago, there was a, a large concern that a wall of iron ore was going to hit markets. Uh, that hasn't transpired uh, because of the problems that we've mentioned on the, on the demand side. And, and increasingly, uh, we're seeing uh, the, the, the demand pick up and uh, that's uh, translated into high, uh, a lot of higher uh, forecast prices uh, across the commodity spectrum. SAB out with the trading update today. Lager volumes up 1% across the board and Asia and Africa making up for reduced demand in Europe and LATAM or Latin America. The stock today closing up two thirds of a percent at 226 rand and 95 cents. Yeah, I think that trading update pr probably reflects the current trading conditions uh, globally at the moment, that consumers are under pressure, uh, that uh, you know, the, 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 the dollar for purchasing thing, things is under pressure. Uh, in terms of, of the update itself, spectacular growth out of Africa and Asia, but unfortunately it makes up a, sm uh, a fairly small component of the overall earnings, uh, you know, pr probably North America about 25%. Uh, Latin America about 20%, Europe pretty much the same. And those were the key areas where they under, were, were under pressure uh, with demand falling off uh, you know, fairly dramatically. But I think uh, a net 1% overall growth in organic uh, lager volumes is, is pretty good under the, under the circumstances. Would you be buying SAB at 226 Rand 95? Yeah, we, we, we like the share. We, we've had our eye on it. Uh, we, we Think that You've had your eye on it, but you haven't bought to yeah, this we, point. We, uh, we, we were buyers below 220, and we are hopeful that it'll come, that it'll experience some further weakness going forward, and uh, you know, then again we'll start buying it. But I think one, one factor that the company does have in its favour is that it reports in dollars, and obviously uh, earnings translated from uh, uh, fr from non-dollar related. Uh, uh, denominated uh, earnings is going to translate into high dollar earnings. So I think uh, you know, we could see the company outperforming earnings expectations. So categorically, if you see further weakness in SAB, would you pick up below 220? Yeah, absolutely. I can quote you on that going <laughs> You can quote me. <laughs> Andrew, in terms of the general market at the moment and everyone poised on this quantitative easing story out of the US waiting for the 3rd of November, are you taking some profits in some stocks at this stage that have run very hard as we ramped up to that 30,000 point level? Yeah, I think as you say, everyone is adopting uh, a wait and, see adver uh, wait and see approach. There is key data out this week across manufacturing, uh, production, housing, uh, unemployment, and uh, you know, clearly the market's waiting for that. We've also uh, in, the, in the midst of an er earnings uh, season at the moment. Uh, we've got 12 out of the 30 Dow Jones component uh, companies reporting uh, this week. Uh, we've got the likes of IBM and Apple reporting uh, tonight. Um, so those are going to be drivers for the market. Uh, but clearly the, the market does have its uh, eyes on QE2 if that's going to be announced uh, and uh, you know, th th that'll have a, an effect on the market. Simon, you're very polite. If I call you the wrong name, you're allowed to correct <laughs> me. I, I, my director there is saying, this is not Andrew, this is Simon. So my apologies. Looking at Data Tech, that company in the IT space, we have news out that they are pursuing its Comtex Holdings acquisition. It's a very small acquisition in the scheme of things but it does bring us to the discussion of these IT stocks with the disappearance of dimension data. Where's the focal point now? Where do you put your money? Do you go over the after the likes of EOH, uh, Gajima AST, Pinnacle, Bytes, uh, a couple of the others, Business Connection, or do you play in the big leagues with Datatech? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, the core differentiator between the companies you're describing there is Datatech, you know, virtually all of its income is derived from either the US or uh, the U.S. It gets uh, pretty much none of its income locally. So if one is looking for exposure to a, a local IT company, uh, then uh, you know the, the likes of EOH, Data Centrics, uh, 
uh, come to mind. Uh, you know, if we talk particularly about data tech, they released their results last week. Um, they were, were a good set of results, but off a, off a fairly low base. Um, and the main challenge for the business is to is to up its margins. I think they're probably at about two and a half, three percent at the moment. Um, but can they ever up their margins? The reality is that, uh, and let's use the term, they're box droppers. They don't offer a suite of solutions and services over and above the product. So margins are going to remain yeah. under pressure for, for data tech. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think if you know you look at the the story, it's almost a carbon copy of uh, of Didata, although Didata does have a broader range of services, in that a couple of years ago, Didata's margins were, they weren't earning, earning any margin, in fact, very low margin business, and slowly but surely management set in place a strategic uh, plan to achieve margins of 5%, and it took them three or four years, and, uh, and they Under Brett Dawson's leadership, they achieved 5% yeah. on margins. Yeah, so, you know, I think it is, it, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that data can they can achieve uh, a four percent, but it is a high risk business. Um, you know whether that margin is sustainable is another question altogether. But there is a high degree of operational leverage in the business. 